Greetings, dear ones. I am Cryon of Magdenavis Service. This is a time where my partner steps aside. We say this again so that he is not part of the consciousness of the message. Channeling may seem mysterious and odd to you, for it uses the human being's intellect, education, voice, maturity, wisdom, but it comes from somewhere else. My partner calls it a steady stream of intuitive thought groups that are then interpreted. My partner is here, but he's not here. When I say he steps aside, he literally opens this vessel and through the pineal and his higher self comes the messages you hear. I tell you that so you'll know it's not him. Last time we were channeling like this in another city, we actually defined who we were. But it's not a very good definition, for it's not linear. There's energy all around you. There are invisible things all around you. This morning we talked about the entourage, and it is still here. It's not countable. It's energy. So much of what you see around you, feel around you, sense around you, is energy. And energy comes in many, many forms. You tend to quantify it and qualify it. You even want to measure its vibration. And sometimes you can't. And the reason you can't is because your science is not there yet. Question for Cryon. Been asked before. Is the esoteric world something that someday we'll know more about through science? And the answer is yes. At the moment, because of an earth that has not yet come into its own, there are many things that are separated and linearized that will not be in the future. We've spoken of it before. The highest education universities and colleges on the planet have decided to separate out all of the academia into categories. The physics and the chemistry, the biology, the human beings, the psychology, as though, as though it were not related. And it is. There will be some who will say, well, of course we had to do that because each one needs its own curriculum and there's no way we could put it together. <laughs> Let me tell you something. Yes, there is. You just haven't thought of it yet. You just haven't thought of it yet. One thing leads to another. You can study the one which will lead you to another and come back to it. There are ways of integrating all of it, especially chemistry and physics. And when you start doing this, dear ones, it will lead to great discovery. As long as it's separated, it won't. You have specialists in one and specialists in another Sometimes they get together and party, and that's about it. <laughs> they don't really get together to discuss what they are specializing in. How can you separate these things and be a scientist? So the first prediction we give you is academic. There is a new consciousness coming that will see the sense of allying these together through a confluence of study where one drives the other and they will integrate as they should in a way 
that demands it because of what is there. That's the best I can give you. There'll come a day when you look back and go, weren't we silly to have separated these things? What would happen if you were learning a language and you separated, this group is going to learn verbs, this group is going to learn adjectives, this, bird, this one will learn nouns, and by the way, you're never getting together. <laughs> And the language, by the way, will only be studied, never learned. Nobody will be able to speak it. They'll only discuss it. The language of physics is going to bring you some revelations about consciousness. The channel today is a little about consciousness. Some new things we want to tell you, some things we want to discuss with you. And it's the kind of thing that I love to talk about. Because the future of humanity will change because of it. What do you know about invisible things? Let's talk about invisible things that are not esoteric. Let's go into that which is real and invisible. Let's go into the things that, that, are, that are not even emotional and visible. Let's get to, the, to the, what you call the brass tacks of invisibility. There are physical things that you see and you feel and you work with every single day that are completely and totally invisible to you as human beings. And you accept them and you work with them. And you say, well, they're invisible. And it doesn't bother you, does it? You talk about gravity. Everyone is affected with gravity. The earth depends on gravity. We have told you all about gravity. We've given you physics of gravity. We have told you that it is variable. And eventually you'll know how. That is not linked necessarily to mass. That all of that is tunable if you knew how. That the quantum physics of tomorrow will know how. It's just a matter of time and discovery. And it follows that which is very reasonable and very logical scientifically. One thing leads to another and leads to another. And finally there will be discoveries which allow you to do things which in the past would have seen ludicrous and they'll become real. Gravity someday will be able to be seen and measured with instruments you have yet to discover. When you know more about the physics of gravity you will know how to see it in its glory in its patterns, in its color, with instruments you have yet to design because you don't know what you don't know. It's coming. It becomes more real to you when you can see the patterns and why. By the way, when you can see the patterns of gravity, you will understand a little bit more about how to alter it. There will be secrets revealed within the patterns you can't see. But they're there. Quantum things do not exist in a way you can see them in 3D with your life and your eyes and your consciousness. But with the aids that are coming that will be scientific, you'll see it. That's just one. My partner speaks of the magnetic field constantly. You know it's there. Your compass points to something. <laughs> And it's invisible. This couch of consciousness that you sit in, that literally is tied to life force on the planet, is completely and totally invisible. And there'll come a time when it's not. Your eyes won't see it, dear ones, but the instruments to come will. Imagine 
seeing gravity. Imagine seeing the magnetic field. What is it going to look like? What will the instruments tell you are the colors and the vibrations? Will there be patterns or will it simply be a swirling mass of energy? Let me tell you a secret that is not a secret to any physicist or any biologist. Everything has patterns. Everything. The fractals are always there. The big to the little, the little to the big. And the very shapes of the patterns and the designs that you see are literally giveaways to what creates them. It will then lead you to the next step. You'll understand why the grid does what it does. You'll understand how it allies with biology. You may even be able to tune it slightly for health. These things are all coming. It's going to be science. It's not going to be esoterics. But it will lead to beautiful esoteric discovery. We've told you over and over again, there'll come a time when these very instruments will turn upon human beings, you will see a human being and the devices will reveal a quantumness around you. As it becomes more fine-tuned, there will be ways of actually seeing, measuring, and looking at the patterns in the human Merkaba. Because it's physics. The issue, of course, is it's also biological. You better put these together soon. Because if you stay in the boxes and the compartments, you won't get it. You won't understand the correlations, the confluences, and how they work with one another as long as they're separate. All of these things I predict. Now I can predict these things because the potentials are here. The potentials have been seen before in other societies that have gotten to the place where you are with the science that you have. I can predict this because it's happened before and some in this room will understand the ball is rolling. It's inevitable. There are scientists on this planet right now who are getting insight that will lead to these things in the future. All of it coming your way. Let me tell you something. Don't be afraid. Did you know there's invisible things in this room that are dangerous? Did you know that right now in this room there's invisible things, you can't see them, that could lead to disease if you're not careful? Did you know that? Don't be afraid. Don't be afraid. Because they are germs. <laughs> now, if I'd said that 100 or 200 years ago, people would be shuddering. Where are they? What is this? Oh, it's just esoteric talk. Couldn't be real. <laughs> but your science made it real. When you got the instruments that could see them, then you could control it. Do you see where I'm going with this? Dear ones, it is your legacy to come to the place where your science, your physics, your knowledge starts to align with the confluence of the wisdom of consciousness and you will get invention. And there will be inventions that is going to help humanity in general. Not just to communicate as you have now with your smartphones and your computers. These are inventions that are going to give you water, that are going to save your life, that are going to grow things, that are going to make you understand about population growth. You'll look back someday and say, we were a foolish earth that didn't know anything about anything it's amazing we survived. <laughs> and it's going to be through that which is intuitive invention. I'm telling you this because of what's coming. It leads me to talk about human consciousness. What do you think it is? And you'll say, well, it's thinking. It's the way people think. You might say, consciousness is the description of the paradigm of thinking. 
What will happen when there are instruments that can see it? Cryon, do you mean that it's seeable? Oh yeah, it's physics. And maybe this has been an example. Is it possible that human consciousness together would have the power to change a computer, to set off an alarm, to change electronics, all of that? And the answer is yes. So if that's possible and consciousness can be measured and have power as the experiments have shown on the planet and as the satellites picked it up, it should be something you can see. And you can with the right equipment. It's coming. What I want to do is reveal something I've never revealed before and that is what it's going to look like. Now we've established that physics that is quantum when revealed will have patterns. It's no surprise. What do you think the patterns might look like if you could see a consciousness of a person? Now this is an individual consciousness. And that is physical, has a field, seeable, measurable, and has patterning. You think this is too far-fetched? We have established the fact that it's real, it has power. You ought to be able to measure it and see it someday. It ought to pattern itself. What will they look like? I'll give you two examples. The two greatest human consciousness energy producers are fear and hatred, compassion and love. On both ends of the spectrum, they're powerful, extremely powerful. They can set off alarms. They can crash your computer. They can soften your heart. They can affect your chemistry. And they can do it from across the room. Have you ever sat in a room where somebody was angry and you knew it? It's palatable. You can feel it. You don't want to stay there. You'd like to leave. They're angry. You say, well, there's a dark cloud here. You are sensing energy. And all energy is patterning. All energy anywhere in the universe has ways of being measured and seen. And you can bring it into 3D, study it, and see the patterns. Those who have sat in the room with the great masters of this planet have felt the overwhelming love and compassion of the creative source. And it comes in waves of euphoria. It makes you weep. Weep in joy because you're connected to everything. That's energy. You see what I'm saying? Can you measure love? You should be able to. It's patterned. You can see it. This is fascinating to me. <laughs> I'll show you what the patterns are. Now, these are predictions because it's coming. There'll come a day when these are able to be seen. When they are, human consciousness, when it's patterned, when it's available, when it's studied, you're going to see something very interesting. The patterns I'm going to give you right now will be validated when it occurs. And this channel is yet heard again. This is what you're going to see. Let's talk about that which is the lowest energy first, but very powerful. Understand that low consciousness carries incredible power. So does high. So the low and the high is not a measure of its effective power. It's only a measure of the vibration of its consciousness, of its thought, of where it can go or where it can't go, or how restricted and expansive it is. Power, that is force, is very profound. You already know that. The power of hate, the power of, of that which is evil, very strong power of fear can enslave nations if you're not careful. 
you know of its power. Let's talk about that pattern it will create on an instrument to come, measuring it in an individual who has that attribute. It's going to be the simplest pattern of all. It's going to emanate a strong circle, a confluence of energy that's going to come together and it's going to make a barrier. It's going to appear to be a circle around the individual or the energy of the consciousness the individual is creating. The circle is a prison. It holds itself within itself and it will not be aware of anything outside its own circle. The strength comes from the fact that it's so powerful that others may have the same circle. The circle then can come wider and greater in its entrapment of consciousness around it, creating a bigger circle, but only one. Now you think perhaps I'm talking in language you don't understand. You will. But here's the point. It's simple. It's a box that is a circle. It cannot see out of itself. It only sees itself. It knows of its own evil, its low consciousness, its agenda, and sees nothing else. The circle can enslave those who are thinking the same. It can become a larger circle but can never get out of itself. It cannot see beyond what it knows. There is no patterning outside of the circle that belongs to the circle. It's restrictive. It'll be profoundly obvious, simple, low vibratory, basic survival. Now let's talk about the other one. Here is a consciousness of compassion, love, high-minded thinking, integrity. What does it look like? Stand by because I cannot give it all to you. It creates fractals. It creates a confluence of energy that creates more of itself in the way of harmonics of itself that emanate outward capturing that which is around it, enhancing that which is around it in a never-ending cycle. It's expansive, it's catchy, it's structured, it's complex, and the harmonics it creates vibrates way beyond itself. It has an influence everywhere. So you go to the most simple to the most complex. What do you see is the real difference in the patterns? One is restrictive, powerful. The other one is expansive, powerful. Up to this point, dear ones, on this planet, human consciousness has tended to circle itself in the lowest vibration possible. Hatred, war, argumentative rudeness, unkindness, because it was survival. This is the way humans survive. Country against country, that's what you got. Human to human, that's what you got. And the circle that that pattern created was one that the consciousness could not expand from. So all it did was repeat itself, repeat itself, repeat itself. There was no harmonics to send out. There was, there was no expansiveness. There was no growth. Suddenly, the energy on this planet is going to change the patterns. Because the pattern of consciousness lays in the things which are the magnetic grid, the place you are in space. All these are changing and it's going to modify the patterns of both of these things.
and it's going to make the one that is the most complex with fractals far more powerful than the basic survival one. It's time to grow up and human consciousness will evolve and no longer will there be a, a scale like the scale of justice because the evil would then measure that which is good or bad because that which is powerful will be that which is compassionate way way more powerful and overweighing the simplisticness of the evil on the planet I want to give you proof yet again of something so unusual the first channel of the year I talked about the North Korean leader I'm gonna do it again I'm going to do it again as an example of this that low consciousness darkness cannot see above itself as powerful as smart as intellectual as it thinks it is it can't get out of its own circle the young man when his father died was an egotist he was born and developed watched his father knew he would take over inherited that which was self-important egotist to the max and when he took power he had choice and it never occurred to him that if he took the high road he could be the most famous the most beloved leader on earth all of his life all he had to do was to think beyond his circle he was in the position to do something amazing unify the north and the south of Korea drop the demarcation zone bring families together stop programs that would would then give his people abundance food for all joy on the planet peace he could be the most important the most beloved person on the planet the United Nations would bow before him and applaud and stand every time he went to and from he would have his ego stroked and stroked and stroked and stroked the best of the best and it never occurred to him <laughs> instead he perpetuated the box now he presides over the lowest energy the most restrictive the most renegade energy on the planet and he will not last long isn't it interesting how strong the circle is that keeps a low vibration low all of this is beginning to change dear ones if you examine individual people and the way they act you're gonna see this now you're gonna recognize it an individual comes to you and they're angry and they're rude and they're unkind first thing out of their mouth rudeness and you walk away from that and go what is wrong with this person I want to tell you nothing's wrong with them they're simply invested in survival unkindness and rudeness will get your attention will set the stage and make them important it carries an energy although it's not one that you like that commands attention you may not like it but this is what they survive on and they will and they will and in old energy this perhaps was the best route in fact there are cultures today even today that are invested in rudeness <laughs> because they say that compassion and kindness is equated to weakness you're not going to conquer anybody with compassion and kindness from their perspective they cannot see out of the circle and so to this day in negotiations in talking they come at you with strength rudeness unkindness you can see it even today and it's starting to smack of that which you don't want 
a compassionate person is not a weak person at all. The energy around a compassionate person invites you in. The energy around a rude person excludes you out. Do you see the differences that we're talking about? I just gave you the patterns. Here's what I'm telling you, that human consciousness is starting to rise above what it was. Because that which is light and dark, the ratio has changed, the light is starting to win. It means that compassion, integrity, kindness, all of this shines a light so bright that people will see that far, far better than the rudeness and unkindness. Rudeness and unkindness will eventually be seen as dysfunctional and you'll walk away tell you a lot about the person's energy where they are what they think it's old it's old it's their survival but the new survival will be light and consciousness will start to see it those with those attributes are going to live longer, they're going to be your leaders, that's what you want. Elections will change because of it, business will change because of it, you're going to be seeing more light, more compassion, more solutions because of the ripple effect of the harmonics that go everywhere. When you're compassionate, everybody feels it. Did you know that a compassionate person is seen, is seen as safe? <laughs> safe. Let's go talk to this person because they listen. Because it's enjoyable to sit next to them. Did you feel the energy around that person? Wasn't it great? They're safe to be around. They're not going to hurt you. They're not going to say bad things to you. They're going to listen to you. They're going to love you. You're going to want that in business, aren't you? Is this too strange for you? To think that in the future not only will you have this as a staple, you're going to be able to see it and measure it and you'll even know why it works. <laughs> it's going to change the planet. It's not all science, dear ones. Attitude is going to come out of survival. It's going to come out of the darkness and a more elegant kind of survival is upon you. A survival that says the ones who survive the most are going to have the most compassionate brain and mind. The ones that are going to look past that which is judgment. The ones who are more likely to accept anybody in their face and see the God in them and expect good things first and to be shocked if they're not there instead of the other way around. It's coming. Some of it is already here. That's all I wanted to tell you. Where are you? Where's your pattern? <laughs> are you starting to feel the reality of this it's safe dear ones to relax drop your guard a bit look around be more compassionate be more kind some of you are still expecting something from left field it's like you came out of the cave and you're still not sure that the Bengal tiger is really gone it is. And the, remen the remnants, the remaining evil and darkness on this planet is diminishing, starting to show itself, focus itself. That's good news. It means the end of this consciousness is coming. If you did a poll of nations on the planet, men and women with families, they want peace. They don't want to annihilate each other and have disagreements because of resources or power or any other thing. The idea overwhelmingly on this planet, hundreds of countries coming together, how to create a peace and a oneness and get along. And you didn't have that a hundred years ago. This is what's different measurable a patterning of the planet which starts to re represent fractals and harmonics and compassion measurable welcome to the new earth it's coming 
And so it is.